The Pro Peloton is home to some of the hottest, most drool-worthy road bikes in the world. While I won't be able to tell you which will do the most winning, I can tell you which are the most techy and, subjectively, those that we just like the look of. The two biggest contenders for the men's Tour de France have new group set and wheels to play with. The fastest sprinter in the women's field has a brand new bike and there are some really tasty paint jobs floating around too. I'm going to cover Bike Radar's favourite bikes from both the men's and the women's peloton, so let's start with some bikes that are fresh out of the carbon moulds. EF Education, Easy Post and Tibco SVB have already racked up a succession of wins aboard the new Cannondale Super 6. It has a redesigned front end, which looks a lot tidier, and the team bikes are decked out with Shimano Dura Ace group sets and FSA power meters. The latest Super 6 4 has quite a few new features hidden away under a silhouette that is very similar to the old bike. Now the steerer tube uses a nifty triangle design that allows for very clean routing of the cabling. The bottom bracket is now threaded and Cannondale has even made this a whopping 4 watts faster than the specialised Tarmac SL7, or so Cannondale claims. The UAE and UAE ADQ squads have got some tasty new Shimano group sets with NV wheels. The swap to Jura Ace also sees a change of power meter with a switch to Wahoo computers from SRM. The team has also moved from Pirelli to Continental tyres. Now Tade Pogacar has been busy doing a lot of winning early in the season and so far he's been on the tubeless GP5000S TR tyres. The team's wheel sponsor Envy has been one of the driving forces in tubeless tech, so we're not surprised to see the riders moving away from outdated tubular tyres. In fact, if he keeps up this win rate, this bike will be head and shoulders above the rest in terms of stage wins this year. You know what they say, success breeds success and Marta Bastianelli has netted two podium places and then the win at Le Semien in the opening few races. It's been a good start for that squad. But will these changes be enough for Pogacar to regain his Tour de France title? Only time will tell. Maybe Pogacar and co simply stole all the Jumbo Visma's group sets because Wout van Aert, Jonas Vingegaard and Mariano Voss have been busy getting used to new SRAM Red Access group sets. With the change of group set comes a change of wheels as Cervelo's in-house reserve brands come in. The frame remains unchanged, however, and the team continues its partnership with Vittoria. This is the latest Vittoria Corsa Pro tubeless model and could see the team ditch tubulars for good. The only race where their Dugas tubulars might get an outing is for Paris-Roubaix. Those cobbles are really something else. That said, the opening weekend of the Classic saw all Jumbo Visma riders on a tubeless setup, so we'll have to wait and see. Each year, the Canyon SRAM team seems to have the nicest kit and paint jobs in the Pro Peloton. Now, the riders are back on the design that we saw released last year ahead of the Tour de France Femme, and in our eyes, that's a brilliant thing. Their Canyon aero frames are treated to a SRAM Red Access group set, zip wheels, and Canyon's fully integrated front end. Being a SRAM sponsored team, the riders also use Hammerhead's Karoo 2 GPS computers and time pedals. With the colourful kits, this is a very tidy setup. Also sporting Canyon's bikes are newly elevated to the World Tour, Alpacinder's Koinig and its star rider Mathieu van der Poel continue to straddle cyclocross, gravel, mountain bike and road racing in 2023. Now Canyon supplies the team bikes which are fitted with Dura Ace drivetrains and wheels. The riders, well van der Poel at least, will have access to the aero, the ultimate, the in-flight, the grail, the luxe and probably anything else he wants. Maybe he even has an e-bike for doing the weekly shop, who knows? If you had your pick of the entire Canyon stable, which would you choose? Let me know down in the comments below. Sudal Quickstep is, like Bora Hansgrohe and SD Works, on specialised bikes again this year. Their riders are piloting the Tarmac SL7, which, if race results are anything to go by, balances sprinting and climbing duties very well. We'll focus on Sudal Quickstep's bikes first, partly because they have the reigning men's world champion, but it also gives me a chance to get used to calling them Sudal Quickstep. I really wish they would stop changing names. 
Specialized has some new products up its sleeve for 2023 with Project Black saddles, tires and time trial bars spotted at the pre-season training camps. Riders can apparently choose between Pro and Roval bars for their bikes. Remco Evenepoel uses Pro Vibe bars, whereas Yves Lampert's bike has the Roval bars that come as standard on the top spec S Works bike. In terms of the number of wins from one bike model, we'd expect the SL7 to do rather well. Specialized after all sponsors a number of the biggest teams, and on its roster is arguably the fastest sprinter in the women's peloton. Lorena Wiebus made the jump from Team DSM to SD Works and wasted very little time taking the first win for her Dutch squad. Her bike features a full SRAM Red Access group set, Rovo's Rapid CLX wheels, and rather interestingly, given the rolling resistance of tubeless tyres, the team seems to be sticking with the S Works Turbo Cotton Clincher tyres. Maybe they just love proper tan walls too much. Who knows? For the 2023 season, the Live Racing Tech Fine team will have the choice of their current Langmer Advanced SLs and the Envy Live Advanced SL. We're yet to see the latter being raced, but from the product shots that we've seen, the team bike is going to be one seriously nice looking machine, but more info when we see it in the flesh. The team uses SRAM Red Access group sets and Giant's own Kdex wheels. Trek Segafredo is another team keeping almost the same setup as last year, although the launch of the head-turning, lighter, 7th generation Madone saw it take over from the Amonda as the team's star bike last season. Even the latest Demane saw action last year with Elisa Longo Borghini winning the women's Paris-Roubaix aboard, and we'd expect the same mix in 2023. Time, whose pedal business is now owned by SRAM, is a team sponsor which represents a return to the top tier for a brand that has long been absent. 2022 saw the launch of the new generation Giant Propel, which made its appearance in advance of the men's Tour de France. The race couldn't have actually gone any better for Giant's PR team as the bike was ridden firstly to a sprint win under Dylan Groenewegen before Michael Matthews stomped his way up the horrifically steep climb to Monde to win solo. With a sub 7 kilo weight and aero features aplenty, there's really no reason why any of the members of the team would want to ride the TCR Advanced SL Disc that was the mainstay of the team's bikes for the early part of 2022. So although it's still an option, we'd not expect the TCR Advanced platform to see much action in 2023. The AG2R Citroen team will ride BMC bikes with Campagnolo wheels and drivetrains again for a third year in 2023. This bike holds a soft spot in our hearts due to the use of the Italian group set brand. With Pogaccia's UAE team now on Shimano's kit, Campagnolo is left with only one team representing it across the men's and women's world tour races. The rest of its sponsor lineup stays the same too, with Power to Max continuing to supply the team's power meters and Physique offering five different saddle models to the team. It's an incredibly nice setup, I'm just not sure about the paint here. Some incredible bikes there, but which one would you have if it was going for free, let me know in the comments below. Now, if you like this video, then click the like button, subscribe for more, and ding the bell so that you get notified when we post a new video. See you next time.